The Mystical City of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda Creation and the Fall of Man On the sixth day he formed and created Adam, as it were of the age of thirty-three years. This was the age in which Christ was to suffer death, and Adam, in regard to his body, was so like unto Christ that scarcely any difference existed. Also, according to the soul, Adam was similar to Christ. From Adam, God formed Eve, so similar to the Blessed Virgin, that she was like unto her in personal appearance and in figure. God looked upon these two images of the great originals with the highest pleasure and benevolence, and on account of the originals he heaped many blessings upon them, as if he wanted to entertain himself with them and their descendants until the time should arrive for forming Christ and Mary. The envy of the serpent was immediately aroused against them, for Satan was impatiently waiting their creation, and no sooner were they created than his hatred became active against them. However, he was not permitted to witness the formation of Adam and Eve, as he had witnessed the creation of all other things. For the Lord did not choose to manifest to him the creation of man, nor the formation of Eve from a rib. All these things were concealed from him for a space of time until both of them were joined. But when the demon saw the admirable composition of the human nature beyond perfect that of any creature, the beauty of the souls, and also the bodies of Adam and Eve, when he saw the paternal love with which the Lord regarded them, and how he made them the lords of all creation, and that he gave them hope of eternal life, the wrath of the dragon was lashed to fury, and no tongue can describe the rage with which the beast was filled. Nevertheless, he studied and plotted out some means by which to suffice and deprive them of the grace of the Most High and make them God's enemies. Here Lucifer was deceived, for the Lord had from the beginning mysteriously manifested to him that the word was to assume human nature in the womb of Most Holy Mary, but not how and when, and thus he had also concealed the creation of Adam and the formation of Eve, in order that Lucifer might not from the beginning labor under his ignorance concerning the mystery and the time of the Incarnation. Lucifer suspected that Adam had come forth from Eve, and that she was the mother of Adam, the incarnate word. His suspicions grew when he felt the divine power which prevented him from harming the life of these creatures. He began to follow them like a roaring lion, seeking an entrance through those inclinations which he found in each of them. Nevertheless, until he was undeceived in the course of the redemption, he continued to hesitate between his wrath against Christ and Mary and the dread of being overcome by them. Most of all, he dreaded the confusion of being conquered by the Queen of Heaven, who was to be a mere creature and not God. He first approached the woman and not the man, because he knew her to be by nature more frail and weak, and because in tempting her he would be more certain that it was not Christ whom he was encountering. Against her also he was more enraged ever since he had seen the sign in the heaven and since the threat which God had made in him against him. On all these accounts his wrath was greater against Eve than against Adam. And thus speaking to Eve drew her into a conversation which she should not have permitted. Listening to him and answering, she began to believe him. Then she violated the command of God and finally persuaded her husband likewise to transgress the precept. Thus ruin overtook them and all the rest. 
for themselves and for us, they lost the happy position in which God had placed them. When Lucifer saw the two fallen and their interior beauty and grace and original justice changed into the ugliness of sin, he celebrated his triumph with incredible joy and in the company of his demons. But he soon fell from his proud boasting when he saw, contrary to his expectations, how kindly the merciful love of God dealt with the delinquents and how he offered them a chance of doing penance by giving them hope of pardon and return of grace. His consternation grew when he heard the sentence which God pronounced against the guilty ones, in which he himself was implicated. More especially and above all was he tormented by the repetition of that threat, the woman shall crush thy head, which he had already heard in heaven. The offspring of Eve multiplied after the fall, and so arose the distinction and the multiplication of the good and the bad, the elect and the reprobate, the ones following Christ the Redeemer and the others following Satan. The elect cling to their leader by faith, humility, charity, patience, and all the virtues in order to obtain victory. They are assisted, helped, and beautified by the divine grace and the gifts which the Redeemer and Lord of all merited for them. But the reprobate, without receiving any such benefits from their false leader, or yearning any other reward than the eternal pain and the confusion of hell, follow him in pride, presumption, obscenity, and wickedness, being led into these disorders by the father of lies and the originator of sin. The Most High Providence permitted that Eve, in the unjust Cain, should bring forth a type of the evil fruits of sin, and in the innocent Abel, both in figure and in imitation, the type of Christ our Lord. For in the first one was the law and doctrine of Christ began to exert its effects. All the rest of the just were to follow it, suffering for justice sake, hated and persecuted by the sinners and the reprobate and by their own brothers. Accordingly, patience, humility, and meekness began to appear in Abel and in Cain, envy and all wickedness for the benefit of the just and for his own perdition. The Most High also wished that the first Adam should be the type of the second in the manner of their creation, for, just as before the creation of the first, he created and ordered for him the republic of all the beings, of which he was to be the Lord and head. So before the appearance of his only begotten, he allowed many ages to pass by, in order that his Son might, in the multiplied numbers of the human race, find prepared for himself a people of which he was to be the head, the teacher, and the king. God selected and prepared a chosen and most noble people, the most admirable of past and future times. Within it also he constituted a more illustrious and holy race from which he was to descend according to the flesh. The consonance and harmony of all these prophecies, mysteries, and aspirations of the ancient fathers were a sweet music to the Most High, which resounded in the secret recesses of the divinity, in which regaled and shortened the time to speak in a human manner until he should descend to converse with man.